Hello Oakwood friends and YouTube friends. Thanks for joining me today on another episode of Art with Ashley and Penny. Minus Penny, she's still at school right now. Um, as you may notice, I am wearing my green um, because St. Patrick's Day is just a couple of days away and I thought it might be fun to do something St. Patrick's themed today. So I'm going to teach you an easy and quick way to draw a three and also four leaf clover. And then we'll fill those in with a little bit of watercolor paint. Should be short and sweet. Um, I have just my HB pencil here, um, which is basically the equivalent of a um, number two pencil, if you have that laying around at home. Um, I also have another, um, an eraser. Um, you know, if you, a regular eraser works too, this is just what I have on hand right here that I'm working with. Um, I have paintbrush, rag to wipe off my paintbrush, my watercolor paints, and of course, a little cup of water. Not for drinking. <laughs> okay, so I am going to move the camera now so that you can see my workspace. Um, open my paints up here and we will go from there all right hopefully you can see that pretty well okay so I just have a piece of watercolor paper here and I am going to sketch out my three and four leaf clovers so um I'm going to use basic shapes to create these. If you've taken a drawing class with me at Oakwood, um, that was sort of the preliminary. The first things that we did was kind of break down things into shapes. So um, for the clovers, for the leaves, we will be using a heart shape. So I'm going to do the three leaf clover first. And I'm just very lightly on here creating a heart. If you are not crazy about freehanding a heart, you can always make a template of one out of cardboard or cardstock, um, and you can trace that instead of having to, to freehand it. So I like to work in the round, and what I mean by that is that I continually move my paper around so that um, it's easier for me to get the angles that I want. So I'm just gonna keep making my heart shapes here. Okay, so if you can see, I have three heart shapes that are not completed at the bottom, but you can tell that they're all hearts. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm kinda of going to outline them, um, and by doing that I'll be able to connect them. I just added a little stem at the bottom. Okay, so I will show that to you here. So you can see, all I did was, um, I think that's about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit over, quarter of an inch to a half an inch. And um, I'll, all I did was go around and outline it. So now what I'm going to do is take my eraser and I will um, erase the inside lines to make it a little bit more neat. Might have erased more than I wanted to, but that's okay.
All right, so I erased the insides. So now we're just left with our outline of a clover. Um, I'm going to make um, the four leaf clover over here now. I'm gonna have to make it a little bit smaller because I made the, this one a little bit big, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, so instead of putting my paper um, head on, I'm gonna angle it a little bit. And again, I'm using that heart shape, but instead of three, this time I am doing four. Okay, so I have my four heart shapes here. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with a three leaf clover. And I am going to outline that probably about a quarter of an inch around so that I can connect all of my, the four leaves of the clover. And again, same thing, if you are not fond of freehanding, by all means, you can make one heart template and use that to trace and create your clover that way. Okay, so I'll show you that now. I went around and I outlined the four hearts that I had and I added a little stem at the bottom and I'll do the same thing again. I'm going to go in and now erase my inside lines and just keeping the outside um, outline there. Okay, I will show you. There is the four leaf clover and our three leaf clover. Okay, so I am just going to add in a few details just to um, guide me as I'm painting. Mostly just the the lines in the center of the clovers. As I want those to be a little bit darker than So I just put just a few lines in there just to kind of guide me as I am painting, okay? All right, put my little paint palette up here. This is a very well-loved palette. Um, as you can tell, I did not clean it out last time I used it and Sometimes I'm fine with that, so <laughs> that's what I'm going to work with today. Alrighty. So 
So I primarily, um, for watercolor, because it's not something that I have been specifically trained in, I primarily utilize um, a wet on dry method, um, especially for something like this that I am I'm trying to be a little bit more precise around the outlines. So I kind of want to start with a lighter green. So I am going to mix up, I can't really tell, but I am going to mix up some of this, looks more like a Kelly green or something there. And I'm going to grab some yellow here. Out of that over there to the side. Sometimes I like to be reminded um, of some of the colors that I was working with prior. Um, the last time I painted, so that's another reason that I kind of keep it messy sometimes, or maybe that's just the excuse I'm giving you. We'll see. <laughs> All right, so I have um, a nice light green that's good to start with, and I am just going to go to town here and start filling in my clover. I myself am not actually Irish. Um, I'm Scottish. <laughs> However, um, ever since I was in college, I guess I've always celebrated St. Patrick's Day. And that is primarily because I worked at an Irish style restaurant when I was getting my undergrad degree. Um, I worked at a restaurant called Bennigan's. Um, I think they used to have some in Wisconsin. I'm not sure entirely where, but um, I am from Michigan originally, so I used to work at the one in my hometown called S of Saginaw. Um, and I worked there for about four years. And not only did we celebrate St. Patrick's Day, but we also celebrated halfway to St. Patrick's Day, which is in September, if you wanted to know. So for our St. Patrick's Day celebration, as well as our um, halfway to St. Patrick's Day celebration, we always had rented a giant tent. You may call it a beer tent. Um, and that would take up part of the parking lot and we would serve green beer and something called a patio punch and of course some Guinness. Many people ordered Irish car bombs. It was always a fun and busy day um, and we always dressed up in our our green our St. Patrick's green I think one year I actually um, I had an old pair of um, flats an old pair of shoes that I was no longer using and I <laughs> I painted those completely green and I covered them with green bright green glitter the whole all the whole thing the whole shoe um but they they were no match for the beer and therefore were soaked by the end of the night i have fond memories of that but i am also glad that that is in my past <laughs> and and grateful that i have a different job but I, I will always remember those days for sure. I am told that St. Patrick's Day is more of um, 
a Western, Westernized thing, an American thing. I am told that um, people in Ireland don't actually celebrate, or if they do, it's certainly not in the way that Americans do. All right. I have one filled in. My paint is not extremely even, but I am okay with that. So for my four leaf clover, I am going to use, oh, what do we got over here? Probably a darker green. Normally I'd have a, a scrap piece of watercolor paper, but I do not today. So that's okay. And I, I'm going to make this guy a little bit darker than the other one, just for fun. I'm wondering if anybody has been to Chicago for St. Patrick's Day when they dye the river green. I have a couple of really good friends that live in the Chicago area and was able to to go once and it was quite an experience. Not much of a family uh event. I'll I'll say that. It was uh a bit rowdy for my taste, but it was still fun. We ended up at an Irish restaurant and they had um, a musician come in in a kilt with his bagpipe and he played the bagpipes for us. So that was... It was very neat, a fun experience. These are not going to be the most dynamic clovers, I will tell you that, but we will do our best here. Now, I'm sure some of you are going to tell me that maybe you have difficulty staying in the lines when you're painting um, because maybe you shake or, um, I don't know, watercolor is difficult. <laughs> so maybe you have difficulty staying in the lines and I'm here to tell you that it's okay. <laughs> um, Something you can do, especially with something like this, you know, this is really just sort of an exercise for you to try out, um, you know, practice your drawing skills and then practice painting, you know, something that you drew. So, um, however, if you wanted to, you know, you could always cut these out. These could be a really cute to uh, hang on the fridge, put in the window, um, just a nice, you know, decoration for, for the holiday, right? Okay. So I primarily have my clovers filled in for the most part. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of detail to them. I'm gonna add a little bit of a, a shadow on my stem here. I would not consider myself to be much of a, a smooth painter. I I love that painterly quality. I love the the express expressive brush strokes. Um, so, if you are looking for something a little bit smoother, I would perhaps suggest not following my advice here. <laughs>
All right. Sorry, my friends, I've been kind of quiet there. If you've ever attended an art class um, of mine, um, <laughs> they can be kind of quiet sometimes, and uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Sometimes a little quiet meditation while we're working is it's a good thing. Helps relax us and calm us down. All right, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of detail to this little four leaf one. Um, not a whole lot, not as much as the other one that I added. Doing kind of more of a gestural rendering of this one. Well, I guess the other one's pretty gestural as well, but. I'm just using, I um, don't even know what color you would consider this, but it's um, kind of a very dark turquoise, I would say, almost. I'm just kind of going in and adding a couple darker spots here and there. This is not turning out how I had sort of anticipated it to, but I am working kind of quickly, so. You get what you put time into, right? If you don't put enough time into it, then you get subpar results. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is just for fun anyways and just to kind of give you give you some inspiration or idea or maybe a challenge to make something a little more creative than I just did. <laughs> uh. 
Yeah, that one's, that one's looking a little bit rough. But I'm going to call it good. Okay, my Oakwood friends. I'm going to bring you back up here again. Here are our two clovers, our four leaf and our three leaf clovers, just for fun, in anticipation for the St. Patrick's Day holiday that is quickly approaching in just a couple of days. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you get yourself some corned beef and cabbage, and maybe a little bit of Irish whiskey, and a Guinness, and celebrate the way <laughs> the way the Irish apparently don't. <laughs> okay, have a great day. Thanks again for watching. Take care.